Well guys, we're doing some errands. We went to the kidney doctor for Clay and he got a good report that everything's normal. And now he's gonna put on his mask. He's a masked man. So this was the John Deere mask I made him. So show him your mask. Put it on. That's how I get to the door, I wanna be able to breathe. Okay, so he's going inside. And uh, getting some. Here, let us see you. Now I gotta walk right up to him. Look at me. He's such a pain in the butt. Okay. Well, anyway, we kind of live not too far from Amish country. We have Mennonite in our area. We have Amish. I say that because they're like right down the street from us, right? But we aren't down the street from our house. But I thought you guys might enjoy seeing this. Horse parking only, violators will be put out the pasture. And yeah, this is really for a Amish horse and buggy. And we'll see these once in a while in our area. And I thought you guys would get a kick out of it. And I actually don't want to stay here too long because what if somebody really does want to park and I'm in their way? But uh, we have these near us because we do have a lot of Amish and Mennonite in our area. And uh, not particularly, I don't think we have a horse spot in our area. I think we might, like right in our town. I don't know, I haven't really noticed, but we have Mennonite and Amish in our area. They probably just take a parking spot. <laughs> but uh, anyway, outside, it's a nice windy day. I was really happy that Clay's report came out good and it was no big deal. Everything was great. And. Uh, I was happy too, um, because my allergies are fine today. Yesterday I didn't take my medication like I normally do in a couple days. And so I had up, I felt like my head was like, um, you know, if you feel like your, your ears are popping and stuff like that. But allergy season for sure, but, um... What was else was I going to say? There's some wood over there too, guys. But, uh, it's windy. It's a nice day. I was super happy about Clay's report. It was no big deal. And, uh, he only has to come back like once, uh, six months from now because they upped some meds for him. And then he will be a yearly appointment. So keep him in your prayers. Because they want to watch and make sure your kidneys and everything are okay. And uh, that's it. I mean, he's inside right now getting some plumbing equipment for us. Well, it's what he's doing. He's going to get a piece of plumber's, I guess it's something that goes on top of the wood for the birdhouse. And he's going to paint the bird, the stick, and the bird, the bird, and the bird's feet. And so he's got all that going on. So that's happening. And then I have been making more masks. <laughs> because my attitude is this. Your mask is like a personal hygiene thing and I said make sure you make a lot of masks because they've talked about this stuff coming back in the fall and if it comes back in the fall I want to make sure I have a lot of masks because what if you get a cold or something like that you don't want to be wearing the same mask or you know you want to have a lot of masks like you do socks so you can change them here comes clay this guy's gonna get a soda outside of this machine here he comes. Did you get the thing you wanted? Yep. Was it the right kind? It's the one, it's the one I wanted, yeah. Okay, because we couldn't find the one we wanted, so we went to Tractor Supply. You got a cheap one, and this one was $9. Really? Yeah, I can remember when they were like two. $9? Yep. Are you serious? I'm serious. Nine dollars. All right. <laughs> Behave. Behave. Oh, all that walking's killing me. Well, I told everybody about your good report from the doctor. A good report? I'm not good. And then I told them that my allergies are 
like today it's like back to normal like I don't feel nothing <laughs> yesterday I was just like my ears kept popping from the allergies but that's what happens when you have allergies all right so here we go here we go <sighs> Get my seatbelt on. Well, the cage is bought it anyway, so. Oh, the cages that you sold to Harold? Yeah. Yeah. I one know. thing, will, one hand washes the other when it comes to stuff like that. And then I just bought a Chinese evergreen and Clay bought a hosta, like the yellow hosta. We have tons of hostas. Oh, so many houses. I like the Chinese evergreen because they take like low light. So I think they're cool. That's a house plant and a house is an outside plant. All right, now that I got the mask off, I can put my glasses back on. Huh? Hey, what town are we in right now? We're in Lions. Where do you think oh, we're at? Why did I think? Oh, duh, Ruthie, look. It says Lions right there. This is Rusty's hometown. Yep, my son lives here. Which, he's probably getting ready for work. Can we stop and see my son? No. He's probably he's getting, getting ready, ready for work. work. Yeah. Just as soon as I went to go get a drink, that's when it... Light turn green. That's my luck. Yeah, I always like to call people before I just pop in. Because maybe they don't want company. <laughs> well, they might be just getting out of the shower or something. You know, right. Getting ready for work. He's not going to want us hanging around. Yeah, and they just had a... Uh, you just saw him last Sunday. I know. They just had a... Uh, walk or something in this town too, um, some kind of a, uh, oh. Speaking of the Amish, I want to talk about it. Oh, is it? Oh, yep, yeah, this would be good on the, just to let you guys see. Like I said, this isn't something, this is like, not like a super odd to us because, you know, we see Mennonite and Amish all the time, especially when we go to food auctions and auctions. Here he is, guys. There he goes. <laughs> the difference between Mennonite and Amish. Clay, the... The Mennonite can drive vehicles and the Amish use horses. And the... The women's bonnets cover their ears if they're Amish. And you can see their ears if they're Mennonite. That's how you can tell Mennonites from Amish. Um, and their religious ask. beliefs are different too. Yes, their religious beliefs are different. The Mennonites are more like um, a pilgrim holiness. I don't know if you've ever heard of that type of church. Um, like they're born again, and, and but they wear the outfits, and they do have electricity. Some of them do, don't they? Yes, the Mennonites have electricity. Yeah, we're the Amish. Do not have electricity, and they're more of a rural thing, and so there's definitely a difference. It's an interesting thing to look into sometimes. It's just both groups are nice people. Oh, they're very nice people. Both groups are very nice people. They just, but living among the well, Amish and the but Mennonites, everybody that talks about homesteading and that. Truly homesteading, they'd be living like the Amish. Well, let's put it this way: the Mennonites in the um, the Mennonites in this area live just like all the country people, except for the clothing and and power and, and the power. What do you mean power? Electric. Well, they have power. They have power. 
Amish well, no, I'm saying the Mennonites. Oh, the Mennonites, yeah. They live just like you and me, they only use they wear their clothing. And cars and trucks. And they have, and, and things like that. And the Amish are very nice, too, um, but they don't use any power or anything like that. The Amish men get whole haircuts, and the Mennonite men get regular haircuts. Well, the other thing, too, as far as the homesteading part of it, it all depends on what your definition of homesteading is. Well, a lot of them, a lot of them say, "I'm not homesteading." I'm not. Sorry, I even said homesteading because that's not what I meant. Off grid. Oh, the off grid. The stuff. off grids would be living more like the Amish or the homeless with with, can, <laughs> with candles for lighting and things like that. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things. It's just that. Off grid. I mean, I don't know. I guess it's what you consider off grid, like camping. Well, if you want to live off a hot. What up. they mean by off grid is you're not using the electric companies for your power. You're not using. Yeah. yeah. You could use solar. The Amish don't use solar, but uh, off grid would use something like solar for their lighting, oil lamps, candles. I think all these terms, to be honest with you guys, and I think they're all confusing. Right, I think it all it all boils down to what you consider. Are you modern off grid? Are you living like the homeless off grid? Are you, are you strictly are, off grid? Are you strictly off grid? It's like diets and everything else. It's like the level that you choose to be at. Like I live off grid every year for about ten minutes when my power goes. <laughs> Out. Wow. I have no internet. We're, we just backyard farm. We don't. No. We yeah. are off grid. We aren't. Uh, we don't really understand. We aren't doing any of that. No, we're not really far. We're backyard farmers. We're not really any of that. We're just, like I said, but it is interesting. The terms, you know. Well, a lot, a lot of people get mad if you say you're homesteading and they're just backyard farmers or whatever. Other people get mad if they say they're they're farmers, and then you find out they're just backyard farmers. They're off grid. They're off grid. I, honestly, it's just a matter of terms, and you really just have. I mean, you could be a full flooded off grid farmer, everything in your heart, <laughs> right? It all depends. It, it depends it, on how you feel about yourself. Exactly. It's really what you feel and what your goal is. It's like I was a doctor before I was a doctor because I studied and knew and, and that was who I am and what I am. You know what I'm saying? So I, I mean, it's like I was a, a gardener before I was a gardener. You know, it's like, really, these are all terms that people get all worried about it, but really... A lot of people get really mad about it. Some people get really super serious about it, but to me, it's really, it's just a matter of terms. You feel like you're off grid, then I guess you're off grid. Or you're a farmer or homestead or whatever. It's basically, I mean, not to sound weird about it or anything, but the, the thing about it is, is the the world that we live in now, that whole area has gotten murky because people have have been. It's kind of like revival revival of the old ways in some ways. Even though people have been doing it for centuries, there's a mass of people right now probably because of the internet basically have been trying some new things which is wonderful and good you know but it's just one of those things but it is interesting certainly to look at it but I think the best way I look at it with all that is kind of like the modern way because I don't think we can really ever turn it around what is that white thing in the road huh piece of paper or something I don't think we can ever really turn around and redo the past because we live in a modern world, Plastic bag. but we can embrace some of the older ways for, you know, to even grow. Even the Amish and Mennonites, I mean, <laughs> Mennonites, I think they have websites, and I know they do, because I know, I, know, I know Mennonites that have websites and everything, because they still live in, you know, things are always changing cultural-wise, and so, you know, they... Well, you see documentaries on the well, Amish, too, and... They don't like to have the cameras and the lighting and everything around. Yeah, but a lot of Amish too. Like I said, they it's it's the really more, the more modern ones don't mind, but the it's all and the, each sect sect is different yeah. and what they do. So that's what I'm saying. It's like 
everybody gets caught up on all these terms, but really, we live in a modern world. We can't turn back time, but you just have to embrace what you want for your family and don't get all caught up in the terms and uh, what's this and what's that grid. and am I off grid, am I on grid, am I a homesteader, am I a farmer, am I this? <laughs> you know? Just do your own thing. Just do your own. That's why we're a backyard farm, gentleman farm, meaning that we don't live off our farm. Our farm is a hobby. It's a gentleman farm. It's a hobby. It's like a sport. It's not a, you know, we're not depending on the money from our little backyard farm to supply our daily needs. But we certainly enjoy the hobby. It certainly is a wonderful hobby. And it, and it is a serious hobby for us because we do try to, you know, eat the quail and eat the vegetables that we grow. Well, we eat chicken too. But we also grocery shop. We use the internet. We do all the things, you know. But anyway, I guess the funniest thing is when I first moved out <coughs> with, near Clay, I was all in awe of all this stuff because it was so new to me. <coughs> and I remember <coughs> wanting to kill my roosters and eat them. And then I... No. No, no. But then I got to know some of the local locals and the, my Mennonite friends. Like, I don't know what you do, but we go to the grocery store because it's cheaper. <laughs> Remember John's wife telling me that? I can't remember her name, but... And so that's what I'm saying. And then I remember talking to an Amish girl. Her name was uh, Esther. And <coughs> Esther and I were talking about crocheting. And she's like, hey, I never got... It's like they do the... She does the quilting and stuff, but they never got around to crochet. You know, it's like they don't do everything that we do, too, that we sometimes we think they do. Because they... It's like they got... You know, they're, they've got a lot of those things. On they the got money. things that they each do for their farm, you know, and stuff. And then, like a lot I said, of the women tend the gardens and that, while the men are out plowing the fields and and well, just like cutting hay with the horses. And but just like the girls that work at the the store and the fabric store and the grocery store that are Mennonites, you know, you talk to them. It's like they got a website, they got all kinds of stuff, and you know what I mean. It's just, it, it's just. You read books and you watch it's movies. Not, it's not as, it's you, not as big yard as a lot of people Yeah, you find. read books and you watch movies and you think that's the real world, but it isn't. Did you want ice cream? Where are we going for the ice cream? Raised dairy. I'm having the raised dairies for ice cream. Leo, you think it's open? Said it was. Somebody said Ray's was open. Well, maybe we'll try Ray. Dairy for an ice cream. But I thought you guys might enjoy that enjoy the changes but I love living out in the country so I don't know what I am anymore I'm half country half city half this half that I'm suburbs I'm valley girl I'm country heck I'm hillbilly <laughs> I am who I am that's all what I am well I shouldn't say I am what I am that's like better yeah. check my pocket make sure I got enough cash if you don't have enough cash, I'm going to throw myself on the floor. Oh, them. don't be like them little kids. Yeah, that well, we yeah. we that saw terrible. a sad story about that with ice terrible. cream, but we won't we won't repeat that. I think that just yeah, that was terrible. it was just a that sad was a little much for kids and poor little children. But anyway, oh well, now that we told, we must have, we just saw somebody bring their kids for ice cream, and then they said they couldn't have it. And the kids were all upset. It made us feel bad. Of course, at the time, we didn't have the extra money to say, here, buy the kids ice cream, you know, because we had just, like, ran over there in a dash, but you just kind of felt bad. But hope that doesn't make you feel bad. I'll just, Lord, just get those kids tons of ice cream this year. <laughs> Got eight bucks in cash. Well, if the ice cream is... But I think I have a couple of dollars stashed up here. Too. But we decided that we were only going to get baby cones from now on. Yeah, we got mediums yesterday. Or small, because we can't, can't eat all that. It was a lot. Yeah, I got about 11, 12 bucks. So because we traveled to do a bunch of stuff today, delicious lunch of Pepsi, which is <laughs> way too much for me. And cheese that's supposed to have. I know, but we had to grab something because we were gone for a long time. Then we got these Bridgeford smoked sausages. Well, and don't eat the hot ones because Clay was choking on one and I was flipping out because I thought he wasn't going to be able to catch his breath. And he's eat, he's drinking Mountain Dew. Which isn't good either, but. And so, I don't even know where this raised ice cream is. It's down there. 
It's on the farm. It's around the corner right Do there. Do they get the, the ice cream straight from the cow? It's raised dairy. Oh, so he's got a cow on there. Gonna give me some ice cream. Yeah, cows there. It's a little ice cream stand out front. Oh, that'd be fun. That's where I used to get the raspberry. I don't know if they still have it or not. They should have some kind of a dual whip there, I would think. I don't know. Let's see raised dairy from here. See that white building? Raised dairy. We are on the way to get some ass cream. It's kind of off the beaten path, but I don't think I've ever taken you to raise. You've never taken me to raise. I used to go this way all the time when I was going into Clyde. We got some interesting names and towns around here. Clyde, Rose, North Rose, Walcott, Red Creek. And there's the laundry. Hot fudge, it says. Oh, this is it, guys. Here's the little dairy. Is it open? It says do not enter. Closed. Oh, they're closed. Now, now look at that. Now that's the real country. See that? I can sit on the sofa outside. <laughs> Black raspberry milkshakes. Well, I guess we're not having any rays today. Raspberry corners. I guess we aren't having any rays. Jelly. Hot dogs. Well, sorry, Ray. Next time. A lot of people only use one string to hang I guess their laundry. You have to go through the dugout. And you'll see that all over. I have lived here for 10 years and I don't think I've ever seen anybody hang laundry like on a laundry line. They always use like one big string. It's interesting. Yeah, we'll have to do the ice cream some other time, I guess. But I want ice cream. No, I don't. Actually, I don't really want ice cream. It sounded good for about five minutes, but well, then... I wanted the fruit. I, I like the Dole Whip. Yeah, he's... I like chocolate, but I'm going to try the Dole Whip because we think it's less fattening. Well, it's more of a sherbet or sorbet. If you want sherbet. To call, it, call it sorbet or sherbet. Sherman, like that guy on those old cartoons. So isn't it fun to look through the country, the little different life and the things you see? I love it. Everybody's got something different going on. Laid back. Every house is different. You don't get the cookie cutter houses. Lots of people have a barn. Most people I think in this area are really like us, backyard farmers. Like, everybody will probably have a few chickens or something like that, but they don't have, like, masses of property and land. They just have a little something. Maybe they raise a couple goats or sheep or llamas or yeah. alpacas. Yeah, some people have, don't we have a, bi a bison farm near us? Yeah, so there's a bison farm. Yeah, we've got different things like that out here. This used to be an alpaca farm, and now they don't raise them anymore know what happened. I know that at one point, I think New York State, they got like $5,000 a year just for raising alpaca. I'm not sure if the laws or something may have changed for that. Well, they probably were endangered at one time, and now they're not. Yeah, like the government would give you so much money. I know with bees, there's programs too, but you have to earn, like with the bees, you have to earn $1,000 a year to get a grant, and then you've got to do studies and things. It's different. And then these are what the apple trees. Mm -hmm. Yep. We are the number one or number two seller of apples here in Wayne County, in New York, in the country of the United States of America. Just in case you are overseas. The rhubarb is up ahead. Yes. We know we should have bought that bucket for that rhubarb. We're gonna keep it there for the next thirty years. That would have been a bargain, you think? There's a lot of buying and selling and trading too in this area because there's not a lot of stores once you get outside of the the little like they're not 
really the city, but they'll be like these little tiny cities. So you'll get a lot of buying and selling, like among the people to to each other. Where you wouldn't get that in the suburbs or a bigger city, people just wouldn't even, they would just go to the store, you know? But like Kimmy, she's selling eggs right now, right? Someone else, you know, people just sell a lot of stuff like that when you get out in the country more. Well, if you're buying eggs in the country, they're using their egg money for to buy more feed for the chickens. So. Right. And usually that's what happens. It's not necessarily even a profit maker sometimes. Because well, you end up spending more on feed than you would ever get any eggs enough to make up the profit. Right. But it's a nice little hobby. Mm -hmm. It just depends on what kind of hens, laying hens you have. If you have a mixed bunch of chickens, then some chickens lay more eggs than the other type of chicken. Or if you like only white eggs, or like only like brown eggs too. Getting kind of tired now. Yeah, you know, we must be on the same page. I was thinking, oh, I'd love to go home and just close my eyes and go to sleep. Well, that dog kept me up again. Oh, what did he do? Bark last night? No, he, he got up and laid with me. I didn't remember him getting up there, but when I came to... <laughs> yes. Because the alarm on the incubator went off because it was getting low humidity. I was out like a light last night. I closed my eyes and I didn't wake up till this morning. So I wouldn't have heard nothing. I didn't know where the dog was or... <laughs> All I knew was I closed my eyes and I was... no. Well, actually I played on the internet.